Hello, in this video, we're going to be covering Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path through a graph. And the example that we're going to give for this in our code and everything is uh, a graph of some cities in Virginia with roads between them. And Dijkstra's algorithm is going to let us find the quickest path between any two cities in the graph. And so it has applications in things like GPS and, and pathfinding applications. But Dijkstra's algorithm can be used for lots and lots of other problems too. Anytime you have a graph and you want to find the quickest way between two nodes. And so this uh, algorithm is actually can be used in things like routers that have to find in a computer network where all of the nodes are computers or switches and all of the edges are the, in, the uh, network connections between them then Dijkstra's algorithm can be used to find the best way to route packets through that network. It can also be used in things like video games if you want to do a pathfinding kind of thing or other applications too. You know, we talked about making a graph of web pages linked together, then you could use Dijkstra's to find like the quickest set of links to take you from one, pa one page to another. And uh, web designers say that that should be a pretty small number. So if you have a graph, you can do Dijkstra's algorithm on it, and then you can open that up to whatever kind of applications you can imagine. So we're going to first start by looking at an example graph and then talking in broad, broad, broad terms how Dijkstra's algorithm works. Then we'll look at pseudocode for it, and then finally we'll get into some actual Java code to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the way that Dijkstra's algorithm works is you have a starting city that has to be chosen in advance. And then it calculates the distance from that starting city to every other city in the graph. So let's choose Fredericksburg as our starting city, and we'll say that's where we begin. The reason that we find the distance between Fredericksburg and every other city in the graph is because let's say we want to get eventually to like Roanoke then in order to know how long it takes to get to Roanoke, we need to know how long it takes to get to Blacksburg and how long it takes to get to Lynchburg. Because to get to Roanoke, we have to go through one of those two cities and we need to know which one is quicker to get to. Then in order to know how long it takes to get to Blacksburg, we need to know how fast it takes to get to Harrisonburg. To know how fast it gets to Lynchburg, we need to know how fast it gets it takes to get to Charlottesville and Richmond and Danville. And so you can see that it will just spiral out. And in order to know how long it takes to get to Roanoke, we essentially have to know how long it takes to get to every other city in the graph too. So we keep track of our starting city, which in this example is gonna be Fredericksburg. And then we keep track of the tentative cost between Fredericksburg and every other city. This is basically gonna keep track of the best path that we've seen so far, but it might eventually be replaced with better paths. So when we first begin, we're going to set Fredericksburg's tentative cost equal to zero, but the rest of them will all be set as infinity or a super duper big number or some other terminal that means we have no way of getting to them yet. We also are going to be keeping track of a heap. And inside of the heap, we're going to be storing the cities that we have yet to visit. The reason that we use a heap is because we want to constantly be getting out the next city that uh, we need to look at, but we want to get them out in the order of the smallest cost first. This just makes Dijkstra's algorithm take fewer iterations if we consider like the most promising paths first. So in the beginning, we're going to put Fredericksburg onto the heap and we're going to make it a min heap so that it gives us the smallest value out where the value is the tentative cost, so that's zero right here. Then we also need to keep track of sort of our current city where we're looking right now. So the way that we get that is we get it by popping it off of the heap. So I'm gonna pop or rather DQ the value Fredericksburg off of the heap and bring it up here to my current city. Okay, so now Fredericksburg is our current city. Then what we do with the current city is we look at all of the neighbors of it. Fredericksburg has two neighbors. It has Alexandria and it has Richmond. By the way, I have no real clue if this map is really exact at all. I just sort of guesstimated on these figures just to have a graph to look at. So we look at Alexandria and we look at Richmond. And what we're going to do now is we're going to see if the path through Fredericksburg to get to these new neighbors is better than the path we have so far. And for both of them, it's going to be because right now we don't have any path to Alexandria or Richmond. So we'll look and see, is the path through Fredericksburg 
to Alexandria better than the one we have so far. And the way we find the path to Alexandria through Fredericksburg is we look at the tentative cost of Fredericksburg, which is zero, then we add in the edge weight to get to Alexandria. And that gives us a value of 50. And so 50 is less than the infinity, basically, that we have so far right here. And so we're going to replace Alexandria's tentative cost with 50. Then we do the same thing for Richmond. We'll look and see, well, getting to Fredericksburg takes no costs at all. And then moving on to Richmond is an additional 60. And 60 is less than this infinity we have right here. So we'll replace that with a 60. Oops, I forgot to say, after we do both of those things, we're also going to push them both into the heap. So when we find a new better cost for Alexandria, we push Alexandria onto the min heap with its current cost of 50, and then we push Richmond onto the heap as well with its current cost of 60. Then once we've finished scanning both of the neighbors of Fredericksburg, we're done with Fredericksburg as the current node, and then we'll move on to the next iteration where we DQ the next smallest item from the min heap. That gets us to this point. Now Alexandria right here is our current city, and we're going to look at both of its neighbors. We'll look at Fredericksburg and say, is the path going to Fredericksburg through Alexandria better than the path we have already? And it's not, of course, because getting to Alexandria takes 50, and then getting from Alexandria back to Fredericksburg takes 50. That's 100. It's obviously better just to stay in Fredericksburg, your starting city, rather than drive to Alexandria and then drive back to Fredericksburg. That's kind of obvious, but the algorithm will check it anyway. Then we consider Alexandria's other neighbor, which is Harrisonburg. We'll go ahead and see if the 50 miles to get to Alexandria plus the 135 to get to Harrisonburg is better than the path we have so far. And right now it is because we have no path to Harrisonburg at all. So we're going to set it equal to 185. And then we're also going to enqueue that on our min heap here and put in Harrisonburg with a cost of 185 so far. Then we're done with Alexandria as our current node, and so we're going to DQ the next thing, which is going to be Richmond. Now we're in this position, and a lot's going to happen now because Richmond has lots of neighbors. So first, we'll look again at Fredericksburg, even though we know that's not going to do anything. We'll see if it's quicker to go from Fredericksburg to Fredericksburg via Richmond, and of course it's not. It would be 120 miles to do that, whereas we have zero already for Fredericksburg. Then we move on, and we'll look at Charlottesville next. To get to Charlottesville via Richmond, it would take the 60 to get to Richmond plus another 70 to get to Charlottesville. And that 130 is in fact less than what we have so far, which is infinity. Next, we'll look at maybe Lynchburg here, and we'll see that it takes 60 plus 110 to get to Lynchburg, which is, and that 60, by the way, comes from this table. So right now it's the same as this edge, but it might not be eventually. So we have the 60 here to get to Richmond, plus the 110 to get to Lynchburg, and 60 plus 110 is 170. That's better than what we have so far, so I'll put that in here. I don't know if that sound is coming across the uh, microphone, but uh, the sump pump is kind of running a lot because it's super rainy today. But okay, so we got the 170 now as our cost to get to Lynchburg. Next, we'll consider Danville as our neighbor and see that it's 60 to get to Richmond, plus 145 to get to Danville. That's 205, which is better than the infinity we have right now, so we'll replace that one. I forgot to say, by the way, these things would be pushed in here, so I should have pushed Charlottesville with a cost of 130, and also Lynchburg with a cost of 170, and then finally Danville with the cost of 205. Those things are all in our min heap now. Then the last neighbor of Richmond is Newport News down here. And so we would take the cost to get to Richmond, which is 60, plus the 70 to get to Newport News, and put a 130, therefore, into this one, and then push Newport News into our queue as well with its cost of 130. Then we're done with Richmond as our current city, and then we're going to DQ one from the min heap. And it's either going to give us Charlotte or Newport News. It doesn't really matter, um, Charlottesville, rather. Let's take out Newport News next. So now Newport News is our current city. We'll check if it's cheaper to go to Richmond via Newport News, and of course it isn't. So then we move on to the other neighbor, which is Virginia Beach. We'll see that getting to Newport News has a cost of 130 from Fredericksburg. Then we'll see that there's another 35 miles to get to Virginia Beach. That makes 165, which is better than the infinity we have right now, so we'll go ahead and throw that one in there. And that's all of Newport News' neighbors, so we'll get rid of that one. Oops, Virginia Beach will be pushed onto the heap. Uh, I keep forgetting that. That 
goes along with its cost of 165. So then we'll get rid of Newport News as our current city and then DQ the next one out of here, which will be Charlottesville. Then we look at Charlottesville and now we're going to compare it to its neighbors. Let's start with Harrisonburg. Well, so far we have a way of getting to Harrisonburg. That's 185 miles, I guess, are our units. And we can see that that is this path from Fredericksburg to Alexandria and then on to Harrisonburg. But now we consider the new path, which is via Charlottesville. So far we know that it takes 130 miles to get to Charlottesville. Then we add on the additional 50 to get to Harrisonburg and we have a cost of 180. And that's a little bit better than our previous path of 185. So then we go ahead and update this here with the new better path that we have seen of getting to Harrisonburg in 180 miles instead of 185. Then even though we already have Harrisonburg in this heap, we're gonna push it onto the heap again, Harrisonburg with 180. So we found a better path than we had before that finally happened. Then we'll move on to our next neighbor, which is Lynchburg. We also already have a path to Lynchburg, which is 170 miles. That's the one from Fredericksburg to Richmond and then down to Lynchburg. Now we're gonna see if it's better to go from Fredericksburg to Richmond to Charlottesville to Lynchburg. And I don't think it is, but let's verify that. So the path we have already is 170. The path we have to Charlottesville is 130, but it costs an extra 70 to get to Lynchburg. So that's 200 total. So that's not better than the one we have so far. So we're not gonna replace it. So now of Charlottesville, we've done Harrisonburg and we've done Lynchburg. We'll look at Richmond, but of course that's not going to be better getting uh, to Richmond directly so far. We know we have a way of doing it with 60 and it's going to be more expensive to go to Charlottesville for 130 and then back for another 70. So we don't update that one either. So now we're done with Charlottesville as our current city. So we're going to DQ the next one out of here, which it looks like it's gonna be Virginia Beach at 165. So now we'll look at our paths and see, is it better to get to Newport News via Virginia Beach? And of course it isn't, getting to Newport News is 130 and it's already 165 to get to Virginia Beach. So adding 35 back is not gonna make that any better. Then we consider getting to Danville. So far we have Danville in 205 via Richmond and getting to it via Virginia Beach is gonna be 165 plus 210 which is 375, which is a lot more than the 205 we already have. So we're not gonna update that one either. So it's not faster to go to any city via Virginia Beach, except for Virginia Beach itself. Then we're done with Virginia Beach as our current city and we'll DQ Lynchburg next as the next one out. Now we'll look at Lynchburg's neighbors. We'll look at Charlottesville, but it's not going to be any better. We'll look at Richmond, but it's not going to be any better. Then we'll look at Danville. We'll consider this one. Danville, we have a current path there of 205. Getting to Lynchburg is 170, plus it'd be another 70 to get to Danville from there. So that's 240. So it's not better to get to Danville through Lynchburg. But I think for our other neighbor of Roanoke here, it will make a difference because so far we don't have any path to Roanoke at all. So the 170 to get to Lynchburg plus the 65 to get to Roanoke gives us 235, which is in fact less than infinity. So we're going to replace that one here. And then we're going to enqueue that into our min heap as well so that Roanoke with 235 gets put in there. Then we're done with Lynchburg as our current city and we'll dequeue off Harrisonburg. And we'll take the one with the 180 because it is less than the one with the 185. So now we look at Harrisonburg's neighbors. We'll look at Alexandria, but we're not going to find a better path there, right? The 180 to get to Harrisonburg plus the 135 back to Alexandria is much less than the 50 we have in the table already. But the other neighbor, which is Blacksburg, we will find a better path because we have no path at all to Blacksburg so far. So the 180 we have to Harrisonburg plus the 140 to get to Blacksburg is three, yeah, 320, which is better than what we have so far. And now at least we have a path to every city and we'll enqueue Blacksburg with 320 into this table here. Then we're done with Harrisonburg as our current city. So we'll get rid of that one and DQ a new one, which will be Harrisonburg of 185. 
we'll look at Harrisonburg again and conclude that nothing's going to change because we just literally did Harrisonburg. This happens every now and then with this, and that's just because like we don't have a way of like going into the heap and updating a value with a new value. The, the min heap just doesn't give us any way of doing that. But it actually very, very rarely happens that we update one of these. And so the fact that we do a little extra step every now and then isn't a big deal. So this one is going to be done as our current city as well. And then we'll get the next smallest one, which is Danville. Then we'll look at Danville's neighbors. We'll look at Richmond and see, is it better to go to Richmond via Danville? And of course it isn't when we figured that out. Then we'll look at Virginia Beach and see, is it better to go to Virginia Beach via Danville? And it's not because we have 165 already and just getting to Danville is more than that. And then we'll consider Lynchburg. Lynchburg, our best path is 170. Getting to Danville is already bigger than that, so it's not better to go to Lynchburg via Danville. It's not better to go anywhere via Danville except Danville itself. So we're done with that as our current city, and then we'll pull off Roanoke. Now we have Roanoke as our current city, and we'll look at its neighbor of Lynchburg and find that that's not better because getting to Roanoke itself cost more than getting to Lynchburg via the path we already have. But then we'll look at Blacksburg and see if that's better. So the current path to get to Blacksburg is from Fredericksburg to Alexandria to Harrisonburg to Blacksburg. Let's see if it's faster to go this way through Roanoke instead. Well, to get to Blacksburg so far, we have to beat 320. And to get to Roanoke, we have 235 plus the 40 to get from Roanoke to Blacksburg. That gives us 275, which is better than 320 here. So we're going to replace that with the 275. Then we'll enqueue Blacksburg with 275 onto our min heap, and then we're done with Roanoke as the current city. Then we dequeue the next thing from the min heap, which is Blacksburg with 275. So we've got that up here now. We'll look at Blacksburg. Is it better to go back to Roanoke through Blacksburg? It's not. Is it better to get to Harrisonburg via Blacksburg? And it's not. So we're done with this one. Then we'll DQ the last thing from the heap, which is Blacksburg again. And then we'll do that one last time. We'll say, is it better to go to Roanoke via Blacksburg? No. Is it better to go to Harrisonburg via Blacksburg? No. And then we get rid of this as our current value. And then we try to see if we can get something out of the heap, but the heap is empty. And that means that this algorithm is done. And now we have found not the tentative cost to all these cities from Fredericksburg, but the final absolute best case minimum cost that we can. And so at this point, we'll look and see, hey, what city did you actually want to go to? If it was Alexandria, the answer is 50. If it was Danville, the answer is 205. If it was Roanoke, which I think is the one I, I mentioned, it's 235. So in order to find the distance from Fredericksburg to Blacksburg or to Roanoke or to Lynchburg, we had to find all of the cities anyway. So that's Dijkstra's algorithm. It relies on this heap in order to make it faster. You don't need to use a heap. You could just store all of the cities that you need to visit next inside of an array, but then you have to loop over that array in order to find the minimum one. And that takes big O of n time, whereas dequeuing from the min heap takes big O of log n time. So using the heap in this way is really cool because it makes the algorithm faster. So let's look at some code for this real quick. This is going to be quite a bit of code. So first we have our graph class that we talked about last time. I made a few other little minor things to it, like I made it an undirectional graph by putting in both the from and the to and the to and the from, because we're assuming that all these uh, roads are two-way streets. And same thing for the remove edge and so on. But it's basically the same adjacency matrix we did last time. Then we have this heap class that is a minimum heap of nodes. And so that keeps track of the index of which node we're talking about. Uh, I use city names on the whiteboard, but really we would use like the node index along with the tentative cost that's stored in the heap as well as in our tentative cost table. So then we have all of the heap stuff we talked about last week. This uh, heap data structure is actually like super helpful for things like this. But like I said, I made it a min heap as well. And then finally down here, once we have our two data structures in place, we actually have this algorithm to do the shortest path calculation. So this method takes the graph that we're going to be doing the searching in and the name of the starting city and the name of the ending city. I gave the graph a lookup method that just takes in whatever value and gives you the node index. So we find the starting place and the ending place. Then we find the size of the graph and make our tentative array. That is this thing over here I drew on the right side of the screen. It stores the tentative costs of all of the destination cities we might want to go to. 
Then I set them all basically to the closest thing Java has to infinity, which is this integer dot max value, which is the biggest number that an int can store in Java, which is just over 2 billion. Then I sent the tentative cost to our starting node to be zero. Then we made our node heap, which is the heap of all of the nodes. And I made it so that the array storing the nodes can be up to size n because that's the max we could push in. Then we insert the starting city with a cost of zero, just like we did to start this thing off. So that's like the setup for this algorithm here. And then we have the main body of it inside of this while loop. While there's at least one thing in our heap of nodes, we get the next node out of the heap and set it into this variable called current. Then, like I said, we loop through all of the neighbors of the current node. This thing is using an adjacency matrix. So we just go through all of the other nodes it might be linking to and see if there is an edge here. So if there is a edge between this current node and the given neighbor, then we do the calculation to see the distance to that neighbor via the current node. So tentative brackets current, this gives us the current cost to the node we're currently on. Then we add in the edge to get from current to neighbor. And then we see if this distance is less than the tentative distance we have for the neighbor so far. If it is, we update that thing. We update the table. That happened over here when we did like Harrisonburg, for instance, we did the update. And then we also insert a new node into the heap with this city, the neighbor city. There goes that sump pump again. Along with the distance that we've now found to that city, which is shorter. Then just so we can see what's happening as this thing is working, I have a little print statement here to say that that's happening. Then after that while loop, when we've gone through all of the possible nodes that we can, we return the tentative distance to the ending city, whatever it was. Then we have this main method here. And inside of this, I just built the graph that we used as the example and put in all of the names of the cities. Then I inserted all of the edges from each thing to each other thing. And then it looks like we did the shortest distance between Fredericksburg and Blacksburg. We figured that out when we hand worked this algorithm to be 275. If I run that here, it looks like it got the same answer of 275. And it looks like it figured out the same things we did basically. It figured out Alexandria is 50, oops, and Richmond is 60. And it even had a first cost of Harrisonburg at 185 and then a new one at 180. So it's doing basically the same things we did exactly when we hand worked it. So hopefully this algorithm makes sense. It's a really widely used algorithm. Um, I should have said this at the beginning, but it's named after Edsger Dijkstra, who is a pretty renowned Dutch computer scientist. So next we should talk a little bit about the analysis for this. What is the big O of this algorithm? I pasted the pseudocode for this algorithm on here, which you can also find on the notes page for today. Now, one thing to talk about when doing algorithm analysis on graphs is that we don't just really have one N anymore. Instead, when talking about graph algorithms, we talk about two things. We talk about V and we talk about E. V is equal to the number of vertices you've got. And E is equal, as you might imagine, to the number of edges we've got. We use V for vertices instead of N for nodes because V is more like uh, less ambiguous, right? Because N could just be sort of anything when you're doing algorithm analysis. N is sort of like a generic input size thing, whereas V means the number of vertices or, the, or nodes in the graph. So step one here says set the distance to every node tentatively to infinity. That's big O of V because we have V nodes. And so if we have to go through all of them and do something, that's big O of V. Step two here though is big O of one. We only have to do one thing for that. And same thing for this, creating the heap is constant time and inserting the starting node is constant time as well. Then as you might imagine, this loop here is the thing that's going to actually dominate the running time of this algorithm. So we have this loop that keeps going while the heap is not empty. And so the question is how many times might that actually execute? Well, it's actually pretty complicated to do this analysis, but we can sort of uh, guarantee that it's not going to be too many times past the number of nodes we have because Dijkstra's algorithm always takes like the most promising thing out of the heap next for processing. It's actually pretty rare that we have to update one of our tentative costs to be something lower. It happened only twice out of the 11 nodes we had in our example graph, and that's pretty, pretty much the norm. So if we have 11 nodes, we had this loop go 13 times, and it's pretty much big O of V because 
like I said, you can, you can make guarantees that we won't go into that this isn't going to have too many loops past the number of nodes you have. So this does big O V iterations. Then setting the current uh, value to heap.dq, because we are using our fancy min heap to do this, this is big O of log of V because we have that property that the heap DQ is always log n. If we were storing these as just a plain old array and had to loop through to find the minimum one, then we would be big O of n here for this. So that's kind of a win. Then we have this loop here that goes through each neighbor of the current nodes. And this one is sort of interesting because it actually depends on whether we did the adjacency matrix or the incidence list. Because we did the adjacency matrix, this was big O of V here. The reason being because with an adjacency matrix, remember you have to basically loop through all of the V nodes to see if there's an edge or not. With an incidence list, it would have been something like big O of E because we would only have to go through the edges that actually exist for that node, not all of the possible edges that might exist. So it sort of depends on your implementation as well. If we had done the incidence list and it was also a sparse graph, we could have done it a little bit more efficiently. If it's a dense graph, it doesn't matter either way. Okay, then we have the body of this loop here. 5.2.1 calculates the distance of this neighbor through the current node, which is a big O of one constant time kind of thing. Then we have this next step, which can insert into the heap. And so this actually takes some time, right? Because checking if the distance is less is a big O of one constant time operation, but inserting into the heap is big O of log of V, our number of nodes. And then this last step here, big O of one for this, because we're just doing a constant amount to return the data. Then let's go ahead and put this all together and see what we end up with. So we have for step one, this V here, then we have some constant time stuff, which we can ignore because we know that that's not going to be the, the most important terms here. Then we have this loop, which I've said is going to execute, iterate rather, V times at most. Then we have 5.1, which is a log of V term. Then we have this, which is a V times the running time, which is a constant amount plus log of V, which is going to be log of A. So confusingly looking, now we have all this stuff. And so we're going to times the V, we're going to distribute that across these parentheses. And that's going to give us V plus V log V plus V squared log V. And so the V by itself and the V log V by themselves aren't the most inter important terms here. And so this whole thing is going to be big O of V squared log V. So that's the running time for this algorithm, the way that we wrote it out and formalized it. If we were doing an incidence list and had a sparse graph, we would have done a little bit better on this 5.2, this for loop here, because we wouldn't have to run through all of the V nodes. We would have only had to run through the edges that actually exist. And then how much more efficient that is depends on how sparse the graph actually is. But the way that we wrote it, I believe it's this here, this V squared log V. So that's all for this algorithm. On the notes page here, we have the pseudocode that we looked at, as well as a link to the code for it and the analysis. So this is a really handy algorithm and it's one to know about and be able to employ when, when you need it. So thanks. In the next video, we're gonna look at minimum spanning trees and Prim's algorithm.